Oh, hi guys, wrong button. Good morning. Now I needed that button. Now it's the right button. Good morning. Welcome to our devotions this morning. I got a couple things going on because I'm trying to resolve this issue where your comments aren't showing up on my my main computer, this one that I'm working on. Um, and Bonnie then Bonnie tells me afterwards, well, you didn't say hi to so and so and so and so and so and so. And I said, well, so and so and so and so and so and so's comments didn't show up. So how could I say hi to them? Um, and I still don't understand why, because it still doesn't make any sense. I know, I know this computer is, it, it, yes, it's getting old. It's, it's seen better days, but it's had some drive issues and there may be some other stuff going on with it too, that I, that I don't know, but I got my little laptop running over here. Yeah. Just as a viewer and it's kind of keeping up with everything. Um, yeah, well, no, because on there, the last comment I got is Verna and Jerry, and over here, it hasn't shown up yet. Connie and Robin are the last comments there, which are, now where are Connie? No, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. No, that's right. Well, I don't know. Good morning. Glad you're here with us. We're getting back into our regular routine now, even though we're going to go into uh, the new year uh, here, finishing out the end of 2022 in this time between Christmas and New Year's. And yes, I took yesterday as a Sabbath and I, I literally did nothing except bake a ham. That was the only thing that I that I did. Well, I had to take Bonnie down to uh, Merrill to get uh, 
uh, well, she wanted some special buns to go with the ham and, and uh, um, what was the other thing? Milk, we needed milk. Um, so I did that and then we watched movies and television, read, napped and it was a day of rest. Um, so, but I'm back here with you today. It's Greek Tuesday, so I'm, I'm, I am doing Greek. A bunch of my brother pastors that would normally join us for Greek at the coffee shop are um, taking vacation time or have other uh, uh, other obligations. But um, a couple other pastor, one of the one of the other pastors anyway, said he wanted to do it too, and I said, well, I was willing. So we're gonna we're gonna do Greek this morning. Uh, but I'm so I'm yeah. So today. Tuesday, December 27th, uh, we commemorate St. John, the evangelist and apostle. Uh, St. John was a son of Zebedee, brother of James the Elder, whose festival day is July 25th. John was among the first disciples to be called by Jesus, right, in Matthew chapter 4. And he became known, known as the disciple whom Jesus loved, because that's how he referred to himself in his gospel. Um, of the of the twelve, John alone did not forsake Jesus in his hours of suffering and death. He was at the base of the cross with the faithful women, uh, where our Lord made him guardian of his mother. Right, um, one of the hardest passages for me to read, most difficult passages for me to read uh, during uh, Good Friday. Um, uh, uh, he says to John, behold your mother, and to his mother, behold your son. Um, after Pentecost, John spent his ministries in Jerusalem and at Ephesus, where tradition says he was bishop. He wrote the fourth gospel, right, the gospel according to St. John, the three epistles that bear his name, first, second, and third John, um, and the book of Revelation, uh, Christ's revelation to John. Uh, especially memorable in his gospel are the account of the wedding at Cana, the gospel in a nutshell. What the heck? Oh, John 3, 16. Um, Jesus saying about the good shepherd, the, the raising of Lazarus, and Jesus' encounter with Mary Magdalene on Easter morning. According to, to tradition, John was banished to the Isle of Patmos off the coast of Asia Minor by the Roman enter, emperor Domitian. Uh, Domitian? Domitian? Domitian. I guess it'd be Domitian. John lived to a very old age, surviving all the apostles and died at Ephesus around 100 AD. Um, he was the, it's, it, it would appear that he was between him and Mark. Well, Mark wasn't an apostle. Mark was just an author of, the, of a gospel. Um, but he, it, it would appear that John was the youngest of the disciples, or specifically the apostles. Um, of the, of the 12. And uh, so he lived, his his life went to, to 100 AD. Um, it doesn't say it here, but he also was condemned before his, um, before his banishment to Isle, the Isle of Patmos. He was uh, to be boiled alive in oil, except that it didn't kill him, um, which is why they had to banish him. Um, and if you remember, there's a point where, where Jesus tells um, uh, Peter of, of his death, but John would continue. Um, not that John continues indefinitely, but that, but that uh, uh, John is the one that dies. Of all the apostles, John is the one that dies a natural death. There's some other tales and narratives written uh, of him, but the the big thing is his in his gospel towards the end he says these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Many other things he did, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the very Son of God. So, so today we commemorate Saint John the Apostle and Evangelist. All right. We are back to our normal doings here. So I've got my treasury of daily prayer and normal, whatever that is. I got my treasury of daily prayer here. If you're in the Lutheran service book, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order. But before we get to that, let's, let's see who is here. Um, now everything, everything on the little computer seems to... I'm going to refresh that. I'm going to refresh this one at the same time. Um, and it appears that they are in agreement. So let's see here. Um, here's me. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Uh, Ashley, good morning. Kathy, good morning. And this third Christmas morning, yeah, 12 days of Christmas, we're on day three. You are correct. 
Verna and Jerry, good morning. In the truck, huh? Headed out. All right. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Jill and John, good morning. Um, Michael, good morning. Warming up to 37 in Florida. Yeah, we're we're warmer here today, too. Um, but we're supposed to have ice this afternoon. Now, I don't know if that's freezing rain or if it's just this uh, if, uh, melting or I, I don't know what it is, but ice is in our forecast here. There's Bonnie. She's off to get her eyes checked today. Um, she says it's seven degrees right now. Uh, there's Glenn. Good morning, Glenn. And Connie and Robin, good morning. Ready to set go. All right. I'm on my, I don't know, I do it by half cups, it seems like, so I'm probably on my second cup of coffee. Let's get into this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 72, broken into little bits, 1, 4, 10 to 15, and 18 and 19, but Psalm 72 all together anyway. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal son. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give, of the people, give deliverance to the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May the kings of Tarshish and of the coastlands render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. For he delivers the needy when he calls the poor, and him who has no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From the oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually and blessings invoked for him all the day. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With a bit of an eye on the clock and time here, I am going to not say a whole lot about that psalm, but we're going to go right on to our reading today from Isaiah. Now, <clears throat> isn't that interesting? We took a a week off here, basically, and did the Luther sermon readings, and yet we're still in the book of Isaiah here. It does have 66 chapters, after all. But we're in chapter 51 at verse 17, going through 52, verse 12. And um, Isaiah, uh, the, the Lord, now through the mouth of Isaiah, is promising the comfort that comes to Israel. Um, chapter 51, I believe it is, is I believe is the, the one that that's begins, comfort, comfort, oh my people. But we're at verse 17. So 51, 17. Wake yourself, wake yourself. Stand up, O Jerusalem. You have drunk from the hand of the Lord. You who have drunk from the hand of the Lord, the cup of his wrath, who have drunk the dr dregs, the bowl, the cup of staggering. There is none to guide her among all the sons she has borne. There is none to take her by the hand among all the sons she has brought up. These two things have happened to you. Who will console you? Devastation and destruction, famine and sword, who will comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of every street, like an antelope in a net, they are full of the wrath of the Lord, the rebuke of your God. Therefore hear this, you who are afflicted, who are drunk, but not with wine. Thus says your Lord, the Lord, your God, who pleads the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken from your hand the cup of staggering, the bowl of my wrath you shall drink no more, and I will put it into the hand of your tormentors, who have said to you, bow down that we may pass over. And you have made your back like the ground and like the street for them to pass over. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. 
Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For there shall no more come unto you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Be seated, O Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at first into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppress, oppressed them for nothing. Therefore, what have I here, declares the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing? Their rulers wail, declares the Lord, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, in that day they shall know that it is I who speak. Here am I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart. Depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Purify yourselves. You who bear the vessel of the Lord. For you shall not go out in haste. You shall not go in flight. For the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your rear guard. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was the reading from last, part of that was the reading from last Sunday. <clears throat> the Lord has given to Israel his cup of wrath, the, the, the cup of staggering, the bowl of his wrath, and they have drunk it down, drunk it down to the dregs. Um, he has sent them into captivity in the nation of Babylon. He had sent the Assyrians to destroy the northern kingdom, and he sent Babylon to capture the southern kingdom, and there is no one left, no one to guide her. Among all the nations she has born, there is none to take her hand. Among all the sons she has brought up. So these things have happened. The, the wrath of God has gone out against his people, and the people have been struck. And so the Lord asks, who will comfort you? In the, in the midst of suffering in this life, who will comfort you? In the midst of all suffering, who will comfort you? When you are in need, when you are in doubt, when you are in darkness, when you are suffering, when, when, you're, when, the, when the truth is not known to you, when, when the sky has grown dark, uh, when evil comes upon you, uh, when you are put upon by those in this world, who will console you? The Lord. The Lord. That is it. Hear this, you who are afflicted, who are drunk with, but not with wine. Thus says the Lord your God, the Lord who pleads the cause of his people. I have taken the cup of staggering, the bowl of my wrath. You drink no more, and I have given it to your enemies. I have given it to those who said to you, bow down, and then walked across your back as if it were the road. It is time to awaken. It's time to have strength, and the Lord is your strength. It's time to put on your beautiful garments, and they are the garments that God supplies you. Jerusalem, the holy city, there shall be no more who come on to you who are unclean. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Loose the bonds from your neck. That's a slavery bond, right? Slavery bond of a neck, of a neck, uh, a neck bond. You were sold for nothing. Really were, right? All mankind was sold into the slavery of sin, death, and hell. For what? For a bite of a fruit for a lie told by the old wicked foe to our first parents. 
And again, they went into Egypt. And although in Egypt at first they were, what do I want to say, first-class citizens, just guests of the Pharaoh. By the end, they were sold into slavery again for nothing. They were oppressed for nothing. Why? Because because they were fruitful and multiplied and filled and people, the, the Pharaoh became the new, over 400 years, Pharaoh became afraid and his, and his uh, counselors became afraid that they would grow to great numbers and if they sided with somebody else with their enemies, then what were they to do? But no. They were sold into slavery in Egypt for nothing, but they were bought with a price and you were bought with a price. You were sold into slavery for nothing. Uh, in iniquity did your mother conceive you, mother and father, and, and you were born into that iniquity, Psalm 51. You, you, you were there before you, before you even took your first breath outside in the world, you were already sold into iniquity. But the Lord has saved you. You were sold for nothing, but you were bought with the price of the holy precious blood of Christ, not with gold or silver or promises to come, but with the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. To wash away that iniquity, to restore you, take away the cup of wrath and staggering, and to give to you the cup of blessing that served to you in the body and blood of Christ and that, that cup of, of wine, which is his holy blood for you, to wash away your sins. How beautiful are the, upon the mountains of the feet of him who brings good news. It's not that the feet are attractive, but it's that the good news comes. Who publish peace, who bring happiness, who, bring, who publish salvation, who says to Zion, to you, God reigns. The watchmen gather and they raise their voice in songs of thanksgiving, for they know and they see eye to eye. Return to the Lord of Zion. Even in the waste places of Jerusalem, the word comes and restores and gives strength and gives hope. We who were people in darkness, lost in, in, in the despairs of sin on that Christmas night so long ago in a manger in the middle of little Bethlehem is born a child. A child who is born to die for you, by his death, saves you from sin, death, and hell. By faith in him, you receive that gift. Not by anything you have done, for you are able to, not, to, to do nothing. It is the Lord who consoles you. It is the Lord who will comfort you. It is the Lord who will turn you from being away from him towards him and into the promise of life everlasting through him. So you, who are now a vessel of the Lord, for he resides in you by your baptism, and he strengthens you by his body and blood, which you take and eat and take and drink, and they are in you as he is in you. Don't go in haste. Do not flee. For the Lord will go before you. He will vanquish your enemy. And the God of Israel will also be your rear guard. So he is before us and behind us, to our left and to our right, as, as uh, St. Patrick's breastplate says. The Lord is our, our comfort and our salvation. He is our rock and our fortress. Our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Merciful Lord, cast the bright beams of your light upon your church that we, being instructed in the doctrine of your blessed apostle, the evangelist John, may come to the light everla of everlasting life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning, Lord of fruitless, fruitfulness, thank you for this Tuesday. Beyond all our efforts, you are the one who grants the results and the fruits that we desire. Without you, all that we do would be in vain. Lord, bless the work that we do this week through your spirit. Grant that our words might bring out the best in others, that our actions might bring out acts of love, and that our good deeds flourish among the people. Grant that just as the earth produces plants and trees and seeds and fruit from its bounty, we would so produce speech and actions that would help others. May we sow, may, we, may what we sow yield the fruits of the Spirit and be a blessing unto the world. Bless the Lord the efforts of this day so that they may serve the growth of your kingdom in the name of Jesus, the God and Lord of our lives. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul whether it be illness or aging or the effects of, of disease, we ask that you would give them strength and comfort in their times of need. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. When they do so in faith, Lord, we ask that you hear them. If they do so without faith, we ask that you would bring us near to them that they might hear the word and then have faith by your Holy Spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day will be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that's our devotions for this Tuesday morning. God's peace be with you. I got to get down to the big city of Merrill for Greek. But God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, for a little more time in God's words. God's peace.